Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's Tara Wilson with episode three of our Lunch and Learn series. I'm so excited to be here today. It is Monday, October 17th, and uh, you may be watching this live. However, you might be also listening to this in the future on a recording, whatever that is. I am so excited that you guys decided to tune in, and all the recordings will be available via my YouTube channel. Um, I, I, you can either just go to YouTube and search Tara Wilson, or you can um, go to, I think it's Create Wealth with Tara. I set that YouTube channel up a long, long time ago, and I'm just not that tech savvy. So a couple people are messaging me right now. I'm going to go ahead and tag them in the post. And uh, if you guys are just joining us, please do so. Again, this recording will be available via YouTube and uh, in the future. So whether you guys are watching it live or you're um, you know, getting this in the future, I hope that you take um, one of the things that I did when I was becoming an entrepreneur and I was working 40 hours a week full time um, with my kids and you know, life, I turned my lunches into working. I also turned my evenings into working. I turned my television off and I started making phone calls and between meetings and um, everything I could to build my business around my life because like I always share my story, when I got started in the industry, this was my family. I had uh, my husband who was working full time too and then my, my one year old daughter and my seven year old. And so I didn't have much time um, Oh, it's so funny. It's always funny to watch myself. I gotta, I gotta tag someone and then I gotta get off of here because I cannot stand watching myself. Give me one second. Okay, so, all right, let me get off Facebook. Turn off Facebook. Sorry, guys. So um, I turned my, the hours that I did have. You know, people always say, like, I don't have time. But then they sit there and they eat a lunch, a leisurely lunch for an hour with coworkers or their spouse or their friends or they say, um, or they watch TV, like there's always time. So hopefully that even if uh, noon Pacific time doesn't work, and sometimes based on my schedule, I might do it at 9 a.m. Pacific, which is noon Eastern, or I might do it you know, at 10 a.m. Pacific, right, which is um, noon some other time zone. I might just switch around <laughs> because, uh, um, you know, some days at noon exactly I will not be available all the time. So, I mean, give me one second. Anyway, how are you guys doing? I'm looking at all of you. Hi, Doug. Hey, Harvey Stables. Wow. Now I feel like I'm big time. This guy is like a Canadian, like, superstar. <laughs> Look at you guys. I love it. Okay, we're going to get into this really quickly. I'm so sorry. I'm just uh, pulling up some of my notes. Give me one second. Um, how are you guys doing today? You have a good weekend? Anybody ready to kick some butt this week? Oh, hey, how are you guys? All right, give me one second. There we go. Boop. All right, so fortune is in the follow-up. Are you guys ready for this? Okay, so this may seem like common sense. In fact, uh, let me explain what follow-up is and what it is not because people always ask me like, Tara, how often do you follow up? And my joke is that I follow up until they say yes or they're, they're dead. And that's <laughs> somewhat true and it's somewhat not true. Um, the bottom line is follow-up is nothing more than giving people uh, the amount of decision or amount of information to make a decision, right? People want to make a decision. So if you, um, if, what is, let's talk about what follow-up is not. Follow-up is not hounding, convincing, begging, um, harassing your friends and your family to see what you see. That's not what follow-up is, right? People say, how often should I follow up? Hey, everyone. Um, well, it depends. The, the whole, um, I guess, system that I use in network marketing is, number one, step one is create interest right? Peak interest. Get people saying, what are you doing? Okay, tell me more. The second one is give them information. And the third one is get a decision, right? Peak interest, give information and get a decision. That is the, the three-step process I work. So I use phone calls. I use conversations. I use Facebook. Um, I use uh, any, uh, you know, Twitter and Instagram kind of by default. I just have them feed to my, from my Facebook. And 
Um, people just want, once they're interested, then give them information. What are you interested? I'm interested in having a health change. Great. Or a service or whatever your network marketing company is, whatever your product or service is, and, and, and um, why would they want to be your customer, right? So you pique interest, then you give them information. If someone wants to become an entrepreneur, it's like, okay, why do you want to become an entrepreneur? Do you hate your job? Do you want more money? Do you want more time? For me, it was, I wanted more time with these guys, right? I already had the six figure income, right? This is, my story is not a rags to riches story. My story was a, I didn't have time with the little people that mattered the most, you know, to me. And so, you know, find out what people want, right? It's not about you. The first thing I'm gonna say, like Rick Warren's book, uh, you know, um, the, the Purpose Driven Life is, it's not about you. It's not. I know it seems like it's about you. It's not about you. Hey, Annabelle. Hey, Becky. It's not about you. It's about finding people who want what you're doing, who want what you have, who who see what you're doing, right? And if you are representing products or services that you absolutely love, then of course you're going to be excited to share them with people. So follow up is not badgering people to convince them. That's why network marketers get a bad name because people are like, oh, Stop bugging me already. I'm not interested in your thing. I'm, I'm, I told you like a thousand times. That's not what follow-up is. Follow-up is leading people through a series of contacts based on their interest to give them enough information to help them make a decision either yes, this is right for me or no, it's not. Period. End of story. That's what follow-up is. Okay? So I've got, thank you. I got some pretty interested. Um, and just know that even if you're excited, even if you had the cure for cancer, do you realize that you could have the cure for cancer and it could cost like a hundred dollars and you realize that people would still say no? Like that's just life. People would still say no, right? So, you know, a lot of times people need to be exposed. Um, you got to remember that, uh, you know, 70 something percent of the population is a W2 employee, which means they don't have an entrepreneur mindset. So sometimes the whole idea of starting a business may be scary, right? Sometimes they just need to see you do it and you have success or failure, uh, before they take a leap, right? So a lot of times that uh, don't be surprised when they don't say yes the first time. You know, even if they're like excited, woohoo, yes, this looks great, or yes, it looks amazing, sometimes they're not just eager to throw out their credit card right to you. So, um, there's a lot of different ways you can give information, right? They're, the best is always person to person. Even though I love, 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 love the power of the internet, I love the power of social media. I love getting in front of people and having conversations because at the end of the day, network marketing is a people business, right? I love to find out what what people are looking for. I love to find out what what makes people tick. I like to find out what they're really um, you know, seeking because everybody is seeking something different. Believe it or not, not all people are seeking money when they come into network marketing. Sometimes they seek community. Sometimes they seek um, just wanting to help people. There are you know, four different personality types and it's important for you to know the personality type of the person that you're working with also. So let's talk about some statistics. Um, here's the reality. So whatever the way you get people interested, um, whether it's social media, making a phone call, having a conversation, bumping into someone at an airport or a mall, whatever it is, um, you know, if somebody says, I'm interested in what you have, immediately get them to a tool. Now, if you're in network marketing, I'll promise you this, every company has tools. For us, it's a video, right? Um, some people, it might be a webinar. Some people, it might be a phone call. Some people, it might be a live meeting. Whatever it is, get somebody in front of the information, right? Get somebody in front of the information. That's it, number one. Now, after they see the information, your job is to say, hey, you know, Bob, you saw the information. Tell me where your thoughts are. What did you like best? You know, can you see yourself being a customer? Is this something you would talk about to your friends, right? Where do you see yourself in this in this picture, right? Here's the problem. And and and, and I know and I want you to hit the like button. I want accountability. If you have given information out and never followed up, I, I could hit the like button like a thousand times. In my career, in nine and a half years, oh my gosh. In fact, I, ah, I'm terrible at follow up. Can you believe it? Can you even believe I just said that? I've made millions of dollars and I am horrible at follow up. 
I have, <laughs> shamefully, I have three phone numbers. Thank you for all of you for your honesty. I have three phone numbers in my phone right now, email addresses, and people said, yes, send me some more information on a plane two weeks ago, and I still haven't sent it to them. I'm horrible, so don't be me. And here's, <laughs> here's the bottom line. 48% of salespeople never follow up. Never follow up, never, 48%. 25% make a second contact and stop. So original contact, here's the information, and then they never, like so 73% of people only make one contact, which is the original one, and never follow up again, 73%. I just showed you how to get into the top 27% of your, into the industry. 12% of people only make three contacts and stop. Three contacts, that's it. Only only 10% of salespeople, and I hate the word sales. Sales, again, is nothing more than being the person that gives somebody information so they can make a decision. It's not about convincing or tactics or closing like slick, the, the like psychology and voodoo and making somebody who doesn't want your product, making them buy it. That's not what sales is. That's not it. I, I, I hate even using the word salespeople. Uh, let's use the word entrepreneur. So 10%, um, only 10% make three contacts. Okay, now keep that in mind. Only 10% make three contacts. I just showed you how to get into top 10%, by the way. Ding, 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 10%. Okay, now here's the bottom line. We're reading statistics here. Only 2% of people are closed on the first contact. In network marketing, because it's a people business and people do you know, tend to talk to their warm market, especially if you have... Um, some kind of influence, if you're a teacher, pastor, coach, if you're in health and wellness and you're selling a health product, your, um, your closing rate might be a little higher. Um, if you're, you know, if you're somebody who's done network marketing successfully, your closing rate, like I definitely close way more than 2% on my first contact. Um, but the average person, you know, the average, average person, especially as you're growing, um, your, your network, um, 3% of sales are made on the second contact, 5% on the third. 10% on the fourth. Okay, are you ready for this? 80% of all sales, of all decisions are made on the fifth through the twelfth contact. 80%. But I just told you that 90% do not even make it that far. So I just really gave you the formula for giving, getting into the top like 1%. You wanna know why there's a 1%? You wanna know why only 2% are wealthy? You know, a couple years ago, I, I this might have changed because this was probably about eight years ago and of course inflation and whatnot. About eight years ago, only 2.7% of all households made a combined income of $250,000 or more. Only 2.7%. So if you make a combined household income of $250,000 or more, you're in the top 3% basically wealthiest people in the United States, right? Have you guys ever thought about why only 3% make it? Well, think about it, and I, I do follow up, especially when I have somebody, and if I did message those people from the plane, which it's just pure laziness, honestly, it's just been, been busy, we're remodeling our house, not making excuses, no, I'm just, I'm just owning it, I just haven't done it, just haven't felt like it, I guess. Anyway, when I do have somebody, like I have some people that are in my funnel right now from Facebook, and I have been following up with them, and I just said, "Hey, I sent you the information. Let's let's talk this week, right? The next time I mess, uh, you know, hey, did you watch the videos? Hey, do you have any questions? I'm gonna continue following up, and you know what? If they don't respond to me, I will stop. Again, this is not a begging or convincing business, because I will tell you this: this is a, a really good thing to remember. If you have to convince somebody to get in the business, you will have to convince them to stay in the business every single month. That is a fact." This is a fact. A person convinced against their will is of the same opinion still, right? I love, love, love uh, my books upstairs, but in The Master Key to Riches, Napoleon Hill says, or Andrew Carnegie, who was uh, one of Napoleon Hill's mentors, said, I, I don't want anyone that cannot make a quick decision because if they cannot make a quick decision, they will never see the project through. See, guys, an entrepreneur, you want someone that says, you know what? This sounds good and is gonna do their due diligence, seek wisdom, seek counsel, seek mentorship, and make a decision. You don't want someone hemming and hawing and hemming and hawing. The broke person hemming and hawing 
is gonna continue to hem and haw and they're gonna continue to be broke, right? Broke is not a state of your bank account. It is a state of mind. Broke people are broke because their mindset and their decisions keep them broke, right? Wealthy people, you could take all of Warren Buffett or Richard Branson or Donald Trump's or any other multi-billionaire. You could take all of their money away today and they will build it again because they have a wealth mindset, right? So don't try to convince people to get in your business. Follow up is not about that. So what does this teach you? It teach you that you need to follow up. So when you have someone says, I am interested, then you give them information. Okay, uh, so let's say you gave them information about the product. What do you like best about the product, right? Um, you know, and, and you can talk about their life, their situation, their specific, you know, I, I don't want to get into my stuff because this is a general network marketing training and it's kind of hard not to give examples, but let's use weight loss because 70% of the population is overweight and I used to sell weight loss. I still say weight loss. It's one of my products. So even if you're not in a network marketing company, a lot of people need to lose weight. Just because someone is 400 pounds overweight doesn't mean they're ready to lose weight, by the way. So you could show them that, you know, they could take a magic pill. I don't have a magic pill, but they could take a magic pill every day and they'd lose a pound of day as long as they take that magic pill. And you know what? Some people would still say no. Like I said, you could have the cure for cancer. Some people will still say no. It's not about you. It's about are they ready to make a change in their life, right? So if someone says, you know what? I'm interested in losing weight. Great. Here's the, here's the program. And then... They see the information and you talk to them, do you see yourself being able to use this program to get to your goals, right? Do you see yourself, um, you know, uh, I always say that I don't close people, by the way. People close themselves. When you have given them enough information where they see that the solution that you have, whether it's for a service or a product or a business, is going to fit the problem that they already have, right? You don't you don't sell people. You you know you want to make a lot of money. You solve problems, right? I would love to pick up my phone and show you, like the iPhone. The iPhone solved a problem, right? People are busy. They're they're running all over the place. I can work from my phone, right? The problem of not being able to get a hold of people, like oh my gosh, think about landlines. Landlines. Like we're horrible. You had to stay at home if you wanted to call, right? Or you had to you had to run to a payphone. The reason cell phones are in everyone's hand is because it solved a problem. It gives you uh, the ability to communicate anywhere, mobily. Like it's it solved a problem, right? Computers, faxes. I mean, think about every technological advance. They solved a problem. So. You don't, like, nobody had to sell me on wanting a cell phone. I saw it and I said, oh, that would fit with my life, right? You don't have to sell someone. They already know the problems they have. They already know the debt they're in. They already know they hate their job. They already know they want to stay home with their kids. They already know they have no money in retirement, right? They already know they're overweight. They already know they're miserable. They already know they're unhealthy. People already know the, the state they're, and they're in. The question is, are they ready to change it? So follow-up is just getting them information. It's like, okay, Let's say someone says, let's do, let's go straight to business, right? Say someone says, I want to make more money, right? And you show them the information, you show them the plan, and they say, okay, this looks really good. Well, what do you like best, right? Well, I like this and I like that. Okay, what questions do you have? Tell me about the comp plan. Tell me about the comp plan. Tell me about the technology. Tell me about your getting started training. Tell me about how we would talk to my friends and family. Tell me all this. You go through it and tell them all. And then at the very, basically... The, the, the only close I've ever done is when I would say, you know, do you have any, is there any information that I haven't given to you to help you make a decision? Like what information do you need right now to help you make a decision? What, what information is that? And they might say, well, I don't understand the comp plan or whatever. Okay, great. Have I answered the question? Yes. And then ask, you know, just keep asking questions. What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Right? Ask questions. At the point they say, I have everything I need, say, okay, great. Are you ready to start your business? Are you ready to get started then? Right? I've answered all your questions yet. There's nothing else holding you back? No. Nope. You know, and, and people might say, well, I don't have the time. I don't have the money. Da, 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 da. There's always ways around it. You know, I'm not going to go into objections. We'll do a whole other talk show on objections. People do not ever not have time or money, by the way. Money is a physical form of value. If I wanted $500 right now today, I would go door to door and I would offer every single person, I will wash your car for whatever you'll pay me. 
Someone might give me $5, someone might give me $20, someone might give me $50. And I would not stop washing cars until I had $500, right? Because I'm going to go provide a value for people and I will not stop until I have $500. It's not hard to get money. That's, that's the, the lamest, like, worst excuse ever. People don't have money. They just lack creativity. Period. End of story. Don't even get me started on that. Remember, someone doesn't get started because of money. It's not because of money. It's because they don't see that what you have will be worth investing their money. They don't see being able to make that money back yet. So you haven't done your job while they're in the funnel. And the funnel is the follow-up process. You have to get to what people are truly looking for. And when they see that, they, they see that, you know, investing their time, people do not, not have time. Jeez, don't make me draw out the time thing either, right? You, we all have 168 hours a week. So does Warren Buffett, so does Richard Branson, so did Steve Jobs, so does Bill Gates. Everybody has the same 168 hours. Everyone sleeps, everyone eats, everyone spends time with their family, everyone has it. It's not about um, saving time, it's about investing it better. Everyone has time. When someone says, I don't want to join you because I don't have time, it just means they don't see that this is going to be a better choice for them than watching TV or playing Candy Crush. Again, those people love it. It's easy. It's mindless. And they're going to stay broke. Don't try to convince a broke person to see an opportunity. Your job is not to convince every broke person to let's have a rags to riches story. Your person is to look, your, your whole point in the follow-up process is looking for people who see it, who get it, who love it, right? So now let's talk about the most effective ways for follow-up. Number one, the most effective ways for follow-up is face-to-face, -face, is person-to-person, -person, whether you're in, you know, like physically in person or on the phone. Why? Here's a little, here's a little um, uh, tip for you. 93% of whether the person says yes or no is nonverbal communication, is your posture and your tone of voice. 93%. Do you know that like only people only make decisions 7% on fact? That's why they hire people who are amazing with energy uh, on infomercials because their posture is so great. I mean, have you ever watched an infomercial that like, oh, here's this great soap and it will be the best thing and it will get out all of your stains, right? No, they're like, this is the best soap on earth. If you get this, you'll never have a stain again. And you're going to buy that soap because you're just like, oh my gosh, you know, you're same information, same statement. You're not buying it the first time, you're buying it the second, right? If you're that excited about your uh, opportunity, every time somebody meets you, they should say something like, I have no idea what she's doing or what she's selling, but I know that she's so good, she's going to be successful. I have no idea what she's doing, but she's gonna be successful. They should believe that you believe. Your posture about your products, your services, your opportunity should be so bulletproof that people know that they better either get, get on with it and look at it or, or they're not going to have the same success, right? You better have the posture that I'm going to succeed without you. I don't need you. See, there's a, there's a, there's a, a shift that happens in network marketing. <laughs> you like that? You like that accent? Thanks, Erica. <laughs> Stone Cold. <laughs> I'm sorry for those people who are watching this on YouTube later. These guys are putting funny comments. Okay, so there's something that happens that, uh, in network marketing. It's an evolution. People at first are very predatorial. You gotta join, you gotta join, you gotta join, you gotta join. I need to join, I need to join, I need to join. I need to make that commission. I need to make that first rank. Ah! Well, have you ever been single in a bar and uh, there's that person that you're just like, gosh, they, they're just hard up. They just want to date. And they're like, they're so unattractive. Like you don't want the person that's like, oh, I need a man. The men are like, ah, I don't want to be needed, right? You're needy. You're desperate. That happens in network marketing, guys. So don't you know you don't need those people. They need you. You've got something that they need. The posture becomes from predator to professional. That's when your whole life will change. It's like, hey, I don't need you, buddy. This is what I've got. This is what's going on. This is where I'm going, with or without you. I don't need your money. If you want to change your life, I can show you, but I don't need you. Like, don't be desperate. Ugh, don't be desperate. Be attractive. All right, so face-to-face -face phone calls. You know, build rapport. Find out what people are looking for. 
You know, I'll say it a thousand times. The biggest problem in this industry, especially with follow-up, <laughs> especially with follow-up, is that people are continually bombarding their prospects with information. And they don't even know if that information is relevant to the prospect. Right? Oh, I showed them the video. How do they not see that? Like, you could show them the video that says, I have the cure for cancer. Do you know the people will still, they'll still say no? Why? Because you haven't showed them how it's going to change their life. So I don't even show people a video half the time. Like, I don't even show them. I get on the phone with them and talk about what their goals are. And I, after the conversation, they are so excited about what I'm talking about because all of a sudden they start dreaming. They start dreaming of better health. They start dreaming of paying off that debt. They start dreaming of being home with their kids. And they're so, all of a sudden they're like, give me your link. Give me your link. Your job is not to lead the horse to water. Your job is to make the horse so thirsty it begs you to take it to the water. That's what follow-up is. It's continuing to pique their creativity and giving them the answers to the questions they seek of the problems they have. Your story isn't their story. It's great to share your story. And if you find somebody who has a story, always share it. You know, hey, you lost 100, you want to lose 100 pounds? Let me tell you about a story about this person that lost 100 pounds on this product. Or you're a single mom. You probably think you can't do it. Let me tell you about a single mom named Jen that joined my team five years ago and has made over a million dollars in this industry. Let me tell you about a working mom. Let me tell you about a dad that was, you know, working three jobs. Let me tell you, right? Again, when they see it, they will make a decision and they'll say, I'm ready to get started because I see that this will be worth my time and my money. But for God's sake, do not send any text messages. Do not send email. You can send a text message only for one thing, to peak interest and to relay information. Do not send a text message saying, are you interested? Are you going to join? No. Posture and tone of voice. You know, get them on the phone. Hey, sorry, my hair is driving me crazy. I cut my bangs yesterday and they're going to drive me crazy. Let me just talk them. It's driving me crazy. Okay, so a lot of people say, like, oh, I gave them all the information. Did you ever get on the phone with them? No, get on the phone with them. 93% is posture and tone of voice. Again, I could have the cure for cancer, you guys, and I could still not sign people up until they see it, until they feel that that will be worth their time and their money. They're just not going to be don't joining you. So I don't even use email. So I, oh my gosh, I have to tell you a great story. And I'm always telling stories that are true and everything I've taught, uh, you know, I've obviously I'm inspired by my 80 million books here and I've, uh, you know, learned a lot from mentors and learned mindset, but I have scraped my knees and I have learned a lot of things from this industry. Now I'll tell you my very first company, uh, back in March of 2007, I was working and, you know, in two and a half years, I made almost a half a million dollars, right? I got to $35,000 a month, $315,000, $314,000, my first full year in network marketing. I think that's pretty successful. I didn't have any friends at the time making $300,000 a year, so I thought that was pretty darn successful. And I met a lot of people in the industry. Now, after that company had a massive decline, and by the way, they are no longer in business, and that's, <laughs> so I just jumped off the ship before it completely sinked, um, and my second business is, not, uh, my second company is not, no longer in business as well, but going from my first to my second company, I didn't know about these strategies, I didn't know about follow-up, I didn't know about po uh, posture and tone of voice, and I sent an email, this is the honest to God truth, to 28 people, and I said, hey guys, I'm launching a new team and a new company. This is what I did. I made this much money in this much time. I grew a team of 9,000 people. Da 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 da. I'm going to do this bigger and better this time. And I wrote this email that, like, if I would have read it to somebody, they would have signed up, right? But I wrote an email because I didn't know about this. I did, I did not know about posture and tone of voice. Do you know that one person responded? They didn't even say good luck. Not even people are like, oh, that sounds great. They're like, one person responded. One and said, oh, okay, tell me what you do. One out of 28. These were my closest contacts. Friends, relatives, you know, people that were my team. This were like my, my cream of the crop. Like you talk about your top 25. This was my top 25 list. One person responded. I literally didn't even say, oh, good luck. Nothing. But here's the thing. Over the next six months, I picked up the phone and had conversations. And 24 of them joined my business in the following six months. But none of them joined from the first email. Why? Because people are not sold on fact. They are sold on people. And then I left my, my second company was very, very small. Again, it's out of business. It was very small. And when I went into my third company, 
I brought nobody because I said, this is so big. Like, I see a market for what I'm doing. And if I can't build, I am willing to build it from scratch. In fact, um, in the life and I just, sorry, my company I'm in now, I have not been given a single person. I have over 10,000 people on my team in a year. Why? Because I don't join something that I don't believe in and I don't think there is a massive market for. I could start from scratch again tomorrow and be a millionaire every time in network marketing. Why? Because I wouldn't join something that I wasn't willing to go well in on and paint vision. So, you know, you, all you have to get good is painting vision. Look, this is what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it. I am on a mission. I am going to put thousands of people on this product. And I'm going to build a, pro, a, a team not only in my town, my city, my state, my country, but all around the world. And the people who believe me and partner up with me are going to have wealth beyond their in desires. And this is why I'm going to do it with these products, with this company right now. That's vision. You don't sell people on a, a widget or gidget. You sell people on vision. People follow people. Like, look at Martin Luther King Jr. Without technology, without social media, without text messages, without any way to relay information, no reminders, no email reminders, no alerts, no calendars, there was no phones, right? He got 250,000 people to gather in one place because they were following vision. People follow vision. You should be able to talk about your products or services and opportunity and people should want to join you and they should even before they even know what you're selling because people want to be with people who know where they're going and why they're going there. So the single greatest thing that you can do during the follow-up process is let them know that they're, you're going to do this big, with or without them, big vision, big passion, sky's the limit. So much opportunity out there. This is why you're doing it. These are the people you're doing it with. These are the products that you're representing or services. Why these are good. Why these everyone in the you know world needs them. And that's when they will say yes. People aren't sold on a video, guys. They're not sold on a text message. They're sold on vision. They're sold on passion. They want to stand for something. They want big. They want something that's going to change their life. They don't want to be sold another product, guys. Now, if you don't have the desire to tell every single person about your products or services, then you might, if you have to say, no, this is not for them, you might want to think about getting into a different company. Because every, I sold, I sold bottles to, of my product, my, my main product, to people sitting in my living room having a, a glass of wine the other day, it's just a couple. I'm like, you're not on my product yet? Walked out with a bottle of it. And the other guy said, give me four. Like, everybody who comes in my house, my housekeeper buys my product. I think she spends half of her money every two weeks buying my product. Everybody that I come in contact with knows what I do and why I'm doing it. Because I am so confident about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it that I will want to tell her. If you have to cherry pick, meaning I can't call grandma. I can't call aunt, you know, Cindy. I can't call Uncle Bob. If you have to say that, then you're not doing the right thing because then you have a limited market, right? If you have a limited market, you're going to have a limited income. Okay, I've rambled on long enough. Let me see if there's anything. Um, bottom line is everybody on your list is on somebody else's list and the person who follows up and gives that person the information that they need to make a decision will be the one that signs them up. The worst thing that happens in network marketing is <gasps> my best friend just joined with somebody else. That happens. That's because you didn't follow up. You know how many people join my, me or my team because I teach my team how to follow up and they said, oh yeah, I met someone on a plane six months ago that told me about this and they never followed up. Matter of fact, I'm going to follow up with the people I met on a plane after this call. That is one thing that I actually have to be very diligent about doing um, and I'll tell you right now, like I'm getting better, but sometimes uh, it's not the greatest. So this is one of the things that I have been very diligent about being intentional about growing over the last, and I Obviously, I follow up. I'm being funny, but I'm just not that great at it. Like, I, I like to paint vision and like, come on, get on with it. And make a decision. I just gave you some great information. <laughs> but, um, you know, in the beginning, I was following up quite a bit. I was probably hounding people. In fact, one guy I followed up with so much, he said, you're going to stop. You're never going to stop, are you? He goes, okay, when's your next meeting? And he came to the meeting and he was so excited. He literally signed himself up on the laptop while is driving on the way home. So there are people that I, you know, will just say, hey, look, you don't even know what you're saying no to. Get him in front of the information. And if you get in front of the information, you answer other questions and they say, this is still not for me, that's the end. That's when you stop, right? 
But I'll tell you right now, I still don't cross them off my list. I just put them at the bottom and say, call back. Because somebody's, you know, circumstance might change. All of a sudden, in six months from now, and say, hey, Bob, you remember we talked six months ago? Look, you said no, it wasn't for you. You said you were too busy. You're like... Is your is your circumstances any different now? You know, would you take a look at this again? Because I've I've done this, 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 and this, this. This is the stories. This is the success I've had. Um, is it something you're still not interested in? So, all right, I could go on and on and on and on. But calls, phone calls, in person, text and email is only to give the information that they are seeking to get them closer to a decision. Once they have all the pieces, just say, okay, great. Is there anything else that you need to know before you make the decision? No. Okay. Are you ready to get started on the product? Are you ready to get started in the business? That's it. Okay. And they might just say, well, I'm going on vacation next week. Okay, great. We'll <laughs> talk next week. All right. So I'll tell you right now, professional people follow up. Professional people follow up. This is not a badgering game. This is a this is a game of getting them through the funnel and then getting them out the other end with a decision. I like yeses or nos. I don't like maybes. Oh, yeses or nos. Okay, Q and A. I know there's a little bit of delay, so um, if you have any questions, pop it in there. We'll uh, we'll save about ten minutes for questions and answers. You guys like this? You like follow up? Get info. Like, 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 love, love, love. I'm going to see if it's any faster on my laptop really quick. Yes, yes. Yeah, see, there's such a delay. I didn't even get a love. It's, good. it's coming. Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay. Hang on one second. See if there's any questions on my Facebook. Hey, Anna. Hey, Kelly. Sam. Sam from the U. Look at all these UK. Hi, UK. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Again, if you <laughs> please do anything. If you guys uh, missed any portion of this, obviously it will replay on my Facebook. As soon as I'm done, I will post the video. Um, and of course, as the you know the news feed gets pushed down on my Facebook, it is all of the episodes are going to be on my YouTube channel. The first two are already there. Again, I think you can just go to YouTube and, and put in Tara Wilson. But also, I think someone told me that it's Create Wealth with Tara. I set up my YouTube so long ago, I don't remember. Um, okay, if you have killed a first attempt, how do you share? How do, have you, if you've killed a first attempt, how do you, I don't get that question. Um, hmm. Maureen, I'm confused. Like, mean if you blow it? Um, I'm going to guess that you mean if you blow it. Um, I would say... If you're new and you're not really confident about presenting information, um, especially if you got someone that's really interested and, you know, again, I always get them to something that's universally available to everybody, like a video or a recorded webinar or some kind of information that's not me. Because if you go to a presentation and it's, let's say it's an hour long and then the next day you go to vomit on your friend about it, you only remember about 25%, right? Then that friend goes to tell another friend and they only remember 25%, which is literally like 5% of the original information. So information gets lost, it gets distorted and then people ask you questions and then you're like, I don't know. I would always take somebody um, that one of your upline, your mentors to a conversation. So I, if, I wouldn't kill it in my first attempt because... I would probably just say, hey, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, watch this video, and then I'm going to get you on the phone with, you know, the person I'm working with. Um, I never did that because I, when I, I'll be honest, like, when I get into a company, I go all in, man. I, I learned everything. I don't need to ask anyone questions because I, I sit there for days on days, and I read the FAQs, and I read everything about our product, and I read everything about the company, and I go through the website. There's not a page in my website, in our company's website, I haven't you know, read. There's not a study of my product that I have. I don't know what the results are. There's not a video. Like I, I literally spend a hundred hours, you know, I mean, think about it. if you join a pharmaceutical company, they're going to, you know, ship you off to New Jersey for two weeks and they're going to train you 80 hours, like to go sell that pharmaceutical because you don't need questions. So the, the best tip I can give you, if you want to be really effective in your follow-up is equip yourself, you know, get, give yourself an edge. Know your comp plan. So they ask you a comp plan question. If you don't have it, have the comp plan on you, right? If you're in a meeting or you're on the phone, have it available. Like they ask you a question. Oh, let me, let's get that. Let's, let's get that, right? They ask you a question on the product. Have that product information available. So if you kill it, if you bomb, um, just say, hey, you know, I'm brand new at this. I, I really would love to get somebody on the phone that can answer your questions because I don't think I did a really good job. So ask for forgiveness and then ask for um 
Is there any way to unburn a bridge? Of course there is. Yeah, um, be vulnerable. Say, hey, you know what? When I got into this, I, I me personally, when I got into this, I was, I, I bugged people. I, I, I was trying to shove this down people's throat nine years ago, and I had a lot of my friends mocking me, and they're like, oh, here she comes, you know, with her, with her product. And you know what? Um, I don't think I burned any bridges, but people were definitely like, oh, don't answer her call. But that, but that's how I was with my people. Yes, there is. Uh, definitely. Just make yourself vulnerable. Hey, I'm new in this. I'm just getting started. I'm just learning. You know, the information I gave you, I vomited over you. I'm sorry. I really, really, really think that even if you're not interested in being a customer or a business partner of mine, you still know a lot of people. And, um, you know, as my friend or my family member or my coworker, or whatever, will you support me? You know, and if you take a look at this information and give them something small, it's got to be less than 10 minutes or there's, there, you know, people have ADD, but they have ADD because of technology. Everything's got to be fast, right? We're in a microwave society. And, you know, can you just take a look at this and think, you know, is there anybody that you can think of that might need this? And give them a couple examples. Somebody that is low on energy, somebody that likes fashion, whatever it is that fits your product or service, give them three ideas. So, you know, for like if it's weight loss, I just keep going to that. Um, do you know anybody that works out? Do you know anybody that wants to lose weight? Do you know anybody that's getting married or going on a cruise or something or on vacation, right? Something like that. Give them an idea. Um, but yes, even if you burn the bridge, you can always say, hey, you know, whatever your job is. Like, for example, my realtor friends. I always tell them, hey, you give me referrals. I'll refer you out, right? Um, yes, if you blow it and want to share it again. Yes, always. You can always go back to someone. There's no such thing as a burnt bridge, for sure. Okay. Hi. I'm two weeks in this business. How do you follow up with new people without being a pain? So Joanna, I think you came a little bit late, but basically is, again, you're not looking to hound people. If they say, yes, I'm interested, and you sent them information, well, this is old uh, Eric Warren. If you guys haven't read it, um, let me give you the GoPro here. Okay, so GoPro is a really, really, really good book for to how to get started in network marketing and how to how to be a professional instead of a predator. And what he says is um, schedule the follow up at the contact. So somebody's interested, right? Um, if you're person to person or on the phone, say, hey, if I give you a video, will you watch it? Yeah, and the prospect says, yes, great. When will you watch it? Well, I will watch it tonight. What time? Eight o'clock. Great. This video is 10 minutes. I'm going to call you at 810. What number works best? This one. Okay. I'm going to call you at 810 because, you know, after seeing my video, you're going to be loaded with questions and I just want to be there to answer them for you. We're in an exploratory phase. I just want to see if this is for you. If it's not, it's okay, but I'm giving you some information to help you make a decision whether you want to say yes or no. I'm going to give you the video. Will you watch it? Yes. Okay. So you call them at 810. I, I'm funny about it. I'm like, hey, we had an appointment. I have you on my calendar. Come on. I'm trying to be a professional here. Why are you not answering your phone? They may be giving their kids a bath, right? So just leave them a message or text them. Say, hey, I called you. Um, have you got a chance to watch the video yet? They might say, oh my gosh, no. Family dinner ran long. I'll watch it now. Great. When are you going to watch it? Right. Okay. I'll call you in 15 minutes and call them because if you don't, then you're not impeccable with your word. And then do they want to work with someone that can't even call them when they're scheduled to call them? No. And just say, hey, okay, you've just watched the video. What do you like best, right? Do you see yourself being a customer? Do you see yourself sharing this with more, you know, more people? And then if they say, you know, I do, I want some more information. Okay, look, and start exploring, right? What do they want to know? Do they want to know more about the product? Do they want to know about the comp plan? And then say, okay, I'm going to send you that information. Let's talk again. When do you ha when will you have a half an hour to review this information? Um, oh, it's Sunday. Let's do, uh, you know, Monday night or let's do uh, Tuesday, whatever, right? Um, and, and again, schedule the follow up at every contact. Just keep them professionally moving through the funnel. You're not looking to pound them. Did you watch my video? 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 They're going to start, they're going to block you. Don't do that. That's not follow up. That's hounding. That's not going to build your business. So hopefully that helps you that you're just, you're going to, you're, you're professionally leading them through a series of information. That's all you're doing and let them know that I'm just going to keep giving you information based on your interest. This isn't me wanting your life to change. You said you wanted your life to change. I'm just here to give you information. This is how it changed my life, right? And be good at your story. Your story should say, you know, where you were, what you didn't like about it. Um, this is another Eric Warrior. Gosh, this is really good. This guy is, you know, 20 something years in the industry. Like, super, super amazing stuff. It's like $6, $10, something like that. $12. Get it. Get this book. Um, your story is where you were, what you didn't like about it. 
um, what you discovered, or, you know, like what the solution is and what you're excited about the future. So a lot of people just go, you know, straight to business. It's like, tell them their story because they might relate to your story. Most people, this is a storytelling industry. This is not a information giving industry. All right. <laughs> Melissa, you can't really scare someone away. Like you really can't. I don't know. Just go back to them and say, hey, I vomited on you. And I really am sorry because I, me vomiting on you really is robbing you of information that could change your life. Can you give me a second chance? Um, yay, thank you. All right. You need less coffee. I know, right? This is my energy drink. It works. Just kidding. <laughs> Shameless plug. Shameless plug. <laughs> I love it. Mm. Joanna, if they've ignored your calls, they're not interested. Remember, the three-step process is peak interest. Someone says, I'm interested, give them information, and then follow up to ask them if they like the information and if they want more information. If they stop answering your calls, then they're not interested. You might want to leave a message. Hey, you told me you're interested. No shame. I'm crossing you off my list. I'm going to go change 80 other lives. I'm going to go create another five millionaires, you know, or I'm going to, you know... <laughs> Don't waste your time on hounding people because I don't know where y'all live, but um, I live in the United States and there's 322 million people. In fact, I live in California. I'm opening the country of California. It's got 39 million people. Anybody want to help me? You know what I mean? Like no matter how many people are on your product or service, it's not 39 million. I promise you. No network marketing company in the world has 39 million people. So my company probably has a few thousand people here. I'm going to go open California. Anybody want to come with me? Like that's a mindset you have to have. You know, I'm not going to chase anybody down because while you're sitting there chasing somebody, all these little, you're chasing the shark. Oh, I love the people that are going after the shark, the big guy. If they get this big fish, their life's over. Let me tell you this. There is no big fish. You want to be big in network marketing, you become the big fish. You become the person that you want to attract. You be a beast. You, like that person like, oh, I want to, I want to go get that person on my team. No, 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 no. You be that person. Because why you guys are so focused on that whale, that shark, 80,000 minnows that could be your next shark that just, just, you know, swam by you. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. There is no luck in MLM. There is nobody that's going to come in and change your life. You want to be a millionaire, you got to work for it. That's it. You got to teach your team the skills of how to professionally do network marketing, you know, books, uh, you know, how to win friends and influence people. You know, go look at uh, my reading list on my blog. I have tarwilsonblog.com. I have a recommended reading list. Um, but I mean, this is a good start. How, uh, your first year in network marketing, how to build a network marketing empire. There's so many that uh, you can that you know, you know teach you how to build this professionally. Uh, da, 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 da. What else? All right. So that was a long, long video. So thank you. Um, Do you guys like this? Love, love, love. We'll do this again tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I will probably do it at a different time, probably 12.30 um, Pacific or 11.30 because my kids get out at noon, which is my time lunch. So I will be changing the time on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Again, if you've um, just joined me, this will be uh, available, recorded in my Facebook in a few minutes, and it also will be on my YouTube channel, and they will be there forever. Please feel free to share this with somebody who needs it. And thank you for dialing in for the Lunch and Learn. Take your lunches and with, with, you know watch these videos or read your you know read books. Fill your mindset every day. You know books, books, you know books. I mean, these are just six of them that I grabbed last night. You know, you want books. You know, this is why I made millions of dollars because I have become a student of the industry. So I'm hoping that I can take my nine and a half years and my hundred books and all the lessons that I've learned and pour into you for a half an hour, 45 minutes each day to help you while you're, you're working, you know, whether it's on your lunches or your commute home or in the evenings while after you put your kids to bed or you're sitting there and uh, take your skills to the next level. Because like my good friend Eric Worre says, we have found a better way. Now let's go tell the world about it. So thanks guys for dialing in. I love you guys. Oh. <laughs> and thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll see you guys tomorrow. I always forget. I always try to use my mouse and I forget that it's my phone. <laughs>